Hi everyone, Matthew Brody here, back with another South African genealogy tutorial. And today, specifically, I'm going to be talking about how to best utilize the website um, Gen Database. As far as I'm aware, it's um, owned by one person. I don't actually know where they got the information from, but nonetheless, it's quite interesting. And as far as I've been able to go so far, all the information I've found on it has been correct. So let's just dive in. Now Gen Database is most commonly used for people who died from about the years 1975 through to 2007. The cutoff point for estate file references on Gen Database is about from 2015 onwards and the cutoff point for recent deaths is about 2008 and for those entries from about 1975 to 2008 they'll give the person's identity number they won't give the place of birth but sometimes they'll give the place of death cause of death which is always fascinating for um, genetic purposes um, and dates of marriage if a spouse was still living at the time of they passed away after 1975 as well so just to give you an example of this, I'll do an easy one. I'll search for my great-grandmother here, Elizabeth Sarah Coots. You can search by a maiden name, but sometimes if the person um, died around close to 1975 or just before or only just after, um, you won't be able to search by maiden name. You'll have to search by married name. So I'll search by maiden name first. So Elizabeth... Sarah Coots and as you can see she does come up there so we just click on view and like I said earlier it will give you the date of birth not the place of birth I'll put some emphasis on that it gives you the place of death the cause of death and I have actually seen her death certificate and I know that that cause of death is um, correct which is interesting and the identity number I also know is correct. Um, to give you another example I'll look up her father who died in 1976 so as I said around about that cutoff point of 1975 so let's look up Samuel Wells Coots. So we can see there under event it does not show the full year for his year of birth. It goes 0090. And that, for some reason, is because he died around about that 1975 time frame. So if we click on View here, all that we get is his full name, his identity number, which is still very useful because it gives his date of birth. Of course, he's my second great-grandfather, so he was born in the 1800s, not the 1900s. And day of death, 1976, October of 1976. I actually came across an entry of someone born in the 1800s the other day. It was my great-aunt's mother-in-law. And it did give the date of birth starting in the 1800s. And that is because she died after 1980. So let's find the person I'm speaking about. She is... The mother of my great uncle. So if we go here, and there's her name. Christina Magdalena Free. So Christina Free. And there's her married name and her maiden name. So we click on view entry here. And there, as we can see, it does give her date of birth as. 1894. So as I've said before, this is very useful for people who died after 1975 because you can use that identity number if you don't already have it on records, order certificates such as death certificates, birth certificates sometimes. Very, very useful stuff. 
a few little tips and tricks that I'll use if you're battling to find your family. Um, sometimes names have been recorded various ways, so the way you thought it was spelt isn't necessarily how it was spelt when it was registered at Home Affairs. So a great little trick that I use is I'll put a percentage sign at the top here and under the surname field when you enter the surname with the percentage sign there it will pull up every single person in South Africa who died or got married after as I said about 1975 with that surname so to make it a bit easier um, and to avoid thousands of entries for surnames such as I don't know Boota or something let's look up my great grandmother's maiden name because there's not that many of them so Aegisclus Go search all databases again in the first name field. Just put the um, percentage mark. So there we go. There's my great grandmother there. I know that she had a sister called Edna. So let's go in the top right here and search Edna. And there you go. She comes up. Edna Matilda Frieda. And it gives us all the information that we want. Place of death, date of birth, cause of death, all very interesting stuff. Now that doesn't only work for um, the surname field, you can also use that for the first name field. So for instance, I'll search for anybody with my great grandmother's names. So Thelma May, and then in the surname compartment I'll put the percentage mark and go search all databases. So there's a few people with those first names. So I'm going to go search in here. I know that her last married name was Bosman. And there we go. She comes up. Thelma May Anderson Bosman. Now, if you're not searching for um, people who died, or if the person that you're searching for who you thought had died is still alive, there is still a way to try and track down their maiden, I'm sorry, their maiden name, their date of birth. And that is with the 2004 voters role. So you can find that voters role under research databases over here. So we click on that. And then we scroll down to the 2004 voters role search. And just to avoid any um, privacy concerns, I'm just going to search for my grandfather because he's since deceased but he was alive in 2004 and he voted so let's search for my grandpa his name was Hilton Bodie and as we can see here it gives us date of birth for those of you who may be overseas and not familiar with identity numbers they go in the year month day format so my grandfather he was born in 1927 in the 12th month, December, and on the 14th day. So again, that corroborates with my um, oral history in my family. This information I know is definitely correct. Um, I myself was living in Port St. John's at the time my grandpa voted, so I know the voting place is also correct. So very, very useful stuff. Um, another example, his um, wife, or not wife, his partner at the time, was my step-grandmother. Um, her surname was Ayres, they never got married, so let's just search for anybody with the surname Ayres. Again, that's quite an unusual surname in South Africa. Now, in the voters role, which differs from the home page slightly, you don't need to put the um, percentage mark if you want to search for everybody with a particular surname. So I want to search for everybody in South Africa with the surname Ayres that voted in 2004. And we can see there, the first one to come up is my step-grandmother, Anne Lynette Ayres. Gives her date of birth, the 7th of January 1934, and voted at St. John's Town Hall, the same place as my grandfather. Gen Database does have a few other things. Um, I don't particularly use this site for those things, as there are other sites which are more um, user friendly, but just to give you an example, the person who owns the site has a few transcriptions from 
a lady named um, Ellen Stanton, who's done a lot of transcriptions for South African records. So I found my second great uncle's marriage reference here. His name was Arthur Melville Anderson. That's my great grandmother Thelma May's brother. And we can see here the names, it's not in capitals, meaning it's probably a transcription. So we can click on the marriage here and go view. And scroll down, it gives us the date of marriage and it gives us the source. And down here there's an um, area called view image. So if we click on view image there, view weary, view image, it's image number 128. The link won't necessarily take you to the exact image in this reference. So we've clicked on the link, it's open here, and we're looking for image number 128, entry 127. So let's go 128. And there we have it. There's my second great uncle, Arthur Melville, marrying Dorothy Beatrice Bibb. Okay, I trust that this information was useful. If you have any questions, comments, or queries, please feel free to leave them in the comments section of this video or just contact me on the South African Genealogy Group on Facebook. Um, I trust I've covered most bases with this website. Just before I go, it does also contain some references to um, the archives, mainly deaths but I use another website called NAS for that and the link I'll put in the description of this video it's a lot more user friendly and also includes other references to divorces and immigration papers which I find um, more user friendly so again thank you for watching don't hesitate if you have any questions to leave them in the comments of this video or just contact me directly thank you for watching I hope this was helpful bye